Hello again and welcome back to Fatfish Guitar Studio. I'm Dave and in this video we're going to be talking about Telecasters, specifically Telecaster Bridges. This is my Fender 60s Baja Telecaster and because it's based on the design of the guitars in the 1960s it's got this type of bridge on it. It's got the brass saddles, each saddle with a pair of strings so we've got three saddles here. Now this is a traditional Telecaster style bridge and some people will argue it gives you a better sound because you've got a, a bigger piece of metal here it's all about getting the, the vibration of the string transferred properly not losing any energy but it does have a bit of a, a fault in that it doesn't allow you to tune the guitar or specifically intonate the guitar quite right so what I mean let's take a look at something like this bridge as you can see on this bridge, there's actually six saddles, individual saddle for each string. And if you look at the pairs of strings, the E and the B, the G and the D, the A and the E, you can see that they're not actually lined up with each other. There's a little bit of a stagger there. That's because the guitar set up what we call set the intonation. And what that setting the intonation is about is making sure that each string is properly in tune, almost like kind of in tune with itself. If you tune an open string to a note, say you tune your first string to an E, and then you fret it at the 12th fret, you'd expect that fretted note to be exactly an octave above the open string. Now, it probably won't be. It'll be slightly sharp or slightly flat, and that's where, where you use your intonation adjustment at the bridge to either shorten or lengthen the string, and so I dial in that 12th fret note to make it exactly an octave above the open string and you would do that on all six strings and then you know that any other notes that you fret anywhere else on the neck they'll be as, as close as you're going to get to being bang on in tune. So as you could see on that bridge with the six individual saddles the staggers usually sort of like the, from the bass to the treble we kind of have three staggering forward then we kind of go back on the third string and then stagger forward again. Looking at the Telecaster saddles, obviously we can't be as precise because we're, we've got one saddle per pair of strings. Now, it's a bit of a compromise because, like I said, people tend to prefer the sound. And this is all subjective, but generally people kind of prefer the sound of the, the bigger saddles on the Telecaster. They say it gives you a better sound, but you have to compromise the, uh, the, tuning, the tuning a little bit. So, is there an answer? There is, and something I've thought I'll try fitting to this guitar, and it's these. So these are Goto in-tune saddles. At first glance, they look a bit like the, the saddles on the bridge on my Telecaster here, maybe a little bit shinier. But if you look closely, you can see that on each uh, saddle, there's grooves that the strings go over and they're machined in such a way that the, where the, the string kind of breaks over the saddle, one's a little bit further forward or further back than the other and what that allows you to do is get something that looks more like the stagger that you would get setting up the intonation on a bridge with six individual saddles so what i thought we'd do is get the guitar down on the bench take these saddles off and replace it with these let's go right then we've got the new saddles here uh, before i start what i'm going to do is just to make life a little bit easier is I'm just going to measure how far off the existing saddles are from the uh, from the back there. It just means when I put the new saddles on I can kind of rough in the intonation, it makes life a little bit easier. So I'm just going to use a set of calipers. If you don't have calipers you can use you know, just a ruler or something just to, to measure those that distance. So that one Got 13.4. This is, I mean, this is just rough. I'm not being super precise. We'll call that 14.8. So I've got a measurement that I can, I can kind of rough the intonation to later. Okay, so to start off with, then we'll get the strings off the guitar, and then take these, uh, take these saddles off. Okay, so that's the old strings off. So now it's just a case of going in with a Phillips head screwdriver into the bridge saddles and just slackening the, the screw off. And once that's right the way around, I'm 
saddle comes off. Take that out with the spring. Let's give that a couple of turns just to keep that put that on there so I don't lose the uh, the spring. And uh, take the other two off. Right then, so those are off. Let's take a look at these new saddles. So comparing these with the uh, the ones I've just taken off, yeah, the new ones are a little bit shinier. But whereas on the the old ones, the string just goes over that barrel. On these new ones, hopefully this will focus. You can see that where the string goes over, there's a point for the string to to pass over. One's a little bit further forward and one's a little bit further back. So that helps us to get kind of that that stagger of the of the string. Okay, so I'm expecting that this is going to be a bit fiddly because I'm working against the tension of the spring and, and whatnot. But screw goes through there, spring goes on there. Make sure I've got this so that the the B uh, saddle is further back than the E and that the Allen key adjustments are facing up over. Get that on there, just give it a couple of turns. That's held in place. Now I'm just get the screwdriver and tighten that screw up a little bit. I'll get all three on, then we can measure the the distance between the, uh, the the back of the bridge and the saddles and get the intonation roughed in before we put some strings on. So just to make life a little bit easier, I took some measurements before. So the base strings were 13.4. So I'll just get my calipers there, measure 13.4. All, all thereabouts, we're not being super precise. This is just kind of rough the intonation in. Okay, so they need to come up quite a bit. Next one is set to, I measured it at 14.2 or thereabouts. That's enough. And the third one was 14.8. Okay, so that's close to where they, where they need to be. Next job is to get some strings on. Um, I'll need to like get the strings tuned up. I need to set the action, um, make sure that the string height is right, and then we can get the intonation set properly. Right, so that's a new set of strings on. I've done another video on the channel where I did a full restring and whatnot of uh, this guitar, so I haven't bothered to go through that in detail. Two things that I need to set on this now is the intonation, so how far forward or back the saddles are. Um, which hopefully I'll get more precise intonation because of that stagger on the individual saddles. And I also need to set the action, so basically the string height, how far the strings are from the frets. And best tool for doing that is a feeler gauge. Feeler gauge is basically other little pieces of metal. And if you, you fit those into a gap, if it goes in, then the gap is at least as big as, when I, in this case, one millimeter. If there's any sort of like like rattle, any wobble, then you know that the gap's bigger. So what you're looking for is a gauge that just fits into the gap that you're trying to measure. These particular gauges, I don't have a 1.6, which is the action I'm going to be going for, but I've got a 1 and I've got a 6 and a 0.6, sorry. So just put those together, squeeze the tips together. That will give me close enough. The action I'm looking for, is, I'm going to go 
is an initial uh, measurement is 1.6 millimeters at the 12th fret. You know, your individual preference will vary, maybe going more towards two millimeters if you like really high action. But I'm saying I'm going to try and dial in 1.6. So currently, I'm just going to move this and see what I'm doing. Put the, the feeler gauge in and there's a bit of movement there. I can lift that up. Shall I? I'm going to zoom in. Get a better. So I can put the feeler gauge in. I can feel there's actually, a, I can lift that a little bit from the top of the fret before it's, it's touching the string. So what I'm going to do is get a, an Allen key or an Allen wrench if you're on the left hand side of the pond. That goes into that grub screw. And we just turn that counterclockwise ever so slightly. And that will basically lower the bridge. I'll do that on both sides. Obviously the fingerboard has got a bit of a um has got a bit of a camber to it, like a curve like that. So I'd expect that the uh, the B string saddle is going to be slightly higher than the E. But so I'll just dial in the E to begin with. So going with the feeler gauge at the 12th fret. That fits. I could do is taking that down just a little bit further. So I shall. Yes, yeah, so put, I can put that, that feeler gauge in there under the fret, under the string. It's touching the fret, but there's not a whole lot of slack there. So do that uh, on the E, same on the B string. Now the B string actually is a little bit too low. So if the string's too low, same thing again, put the Allen key in there and turn it clockwise. See how that how that feels. Yeah, that feels pretty good. So I'll go through and I'll do the same thing on uh, on all six strings. Okay, so that's the action set. Obviously, that's set just using feeler gauges. Ultimately, it comes down to how it feels when I play. So I'll do the next bit of the setup. And uh, obviously, once I've done all that and I play the guitar, if it feels a little bit like the strings are a bit too low, a bit too high, then I can always adjust them slightly, but that gets me to kind of where I want to be. So the next thing to do is to set the intonation. And for the intonation, we've got the screw here, the spring pushing the saddle forward. So I'll play the open string, then play the fretted note at the 12th fret, that fretted note should be exactly an octave above. It'll probably be a few cents high or a few cents low. And uh, we just adjust the, the length of the string uh, to compensate for that. So start off on the E string. That's in tune. Play the 12th fret, fretted note. That's slightly sharp. So what I need to do is lengthen the string so put the screwdriver in and tighten the screw ever so slightly. As you can see, it's pulling the saddle back over. That means my E string is now out of tune. This is the open note. So I'll bring that back up to pitch. Try the 12th fret again. And that's bang on an octave above the open string. Now what's going to be the real test here is the B string. So the B string is slightly sharp. Get the open string right. Now let's try the 12th fret on the B string. And that is bang on. So by having that part of the saddle a little bit further forward and that part of the saddle a little bit further back allows me to get that 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 stagger which means I can get these two strings both perfectly in in tune and intonated with the old style saddle there would have been a bit of compromise or one of those would have been a little bit sharp or maybe one of those would have been a little bit flat
So that's the top two strings done. Let's try the same on the other four strings. Thing to remember when you're dialing in the intonation on the bench like this, try and put the same amount of pressure on the 12th fret that you would normally put on when you're just playing the guitar normally. Obviously, if you squeeze too tight, you're gonna take the string a little bit sharp and you won't get an accurate reading. Right, so that's the intonation set. It helped, I think, having it roughed in by taking the, the measurements off the previous saddles. Uh, so I knew roughly where I was. I got quite lucky that the E and B saddle was pretty darn close just by uh, that initial measurement. So I'm really pleased with the way these have tuned up. So I've got the perfect, perfect intonation on, on each pair of strings. There's no compromise by one being slightly sharp or one being slightly flat. Um, that's all done, like I say, on the on the bench, uh, the string height, I may want to adjust that and the intonation, I'll check that again from like a sitting position when I'm playing it like normally, if you like. So I'm, I'm making sure I'm putting exactly the right amount of uh, uh, pressure on the strings, but I'm pretty happy with the way that works. Okay, hopefully you found that interesting and maybe it's just inspired you to do a bit of an upgrade on your own Telecaster. As I said, these are the, the Goto Intune saddles. These ones, uh, these are the brass ones. They do uh, ones with steel panels as well, but um, I went for brass because it's what I have on the guitar to begin with, and I kind of like the look. Uh, this isn't sponsored by Goto. These are uh, saddles I bought with my own money. I bought them from Northwest Guitars, uh, who again are not sponsoring this, but they're a good bunch of guys. I use them fairly regularly for for spare parts. So. There you go. That's the Fender 60s Bar Telecaster upgraded with some Goto in tune brass saddles. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please click like, subscribe, all of that good stuff. If you want to leave a comment, you're welcome to. I don't always get notified by YouTube when people do leave comments though. So if there's something specific you want to ask me, whether it's about guitar gear, guitar playing, music theory, anything at all, you're better off going here, fill that form in, send your question in to me that way and it comes direct and I can see it and get around to answering your question in a future video. Okay, that's all for now. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.